Uh, yeah, so currently uh, in camp for the for the fight coming up, uh, February 11th. Be fighting a fella from Latvia. Uh, can't pronounce his name, but I know he's a former world kickboxing champion in Glory, which is one of the uh, you know one of the highest ranked organizations in kickboxing. And then he transitioned to professional boxing, 10 and 2 record there with eight knockouts, and I think. As far as I know, what I've been told, he's coming down, cutting weight to get to 205 pounds. So he's a, he'd be a bigger guy, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 um, and that's about all I know. You know, it's, it's all about right now just following a game plan and not getting too emotional. What do you see different in this uh, fight camp than the previous ones they took taken away from? Um, Every, every one of them is just experience, and I guess this one's tough, a little bit tougher because, you know, it's, I don't know, it's getting, it's getting to, like, to the point now where all these fights are just getting tougher and tougher and tougher, and, you know, the opposition is getting, getting up there, so each, each one's just getting tougher, and I'm just getting tougher with them, I guess. Uh, what do you like about this fight? Uh, that it's a fight. Any details you want to throw into that? I'm going to get hit and hit a guy. Um, what's it feel like to fight in, uh, in Hamilton again in front of the Hamilton crowd where you're very well known now and uh, what, what do you take away from that? Uh, honestly, like I'm, I'm starting to notice that, you know, like I do, I do my cardio sessions at, at the Good Life in Hamilton. So, you know, I'm around a lot of people and stuff. And like when I first started coming here a few years ago, no one knew who I was. Like people, obviously, I can see people looking, I'm covered in tattoos and stuff. But people are like, "Who's that crazy-looking guy?" But now people are like coming up and like, "Hey, you're that boxer," and you know, we got tickets to the fight and this and that. And like almost every time I go, I I interact or talk to like five, ten, fifteen different people. So I'm starting to notice that people are uh, they're interested in it around here and. And I find, you know, when when it comes to the to the venue and the night of the fight, when I'm in there, like the the crowd is is very amped, they're very like very hyped up. You had a busy uh, 2022. What do you take away from uh, 2022 going into 2023? Um, that I can definitely, which well, I've already known I can face adversity and overcome it. But that was a there was been some behind the scenes stuff that, you know that. I don't really want to get into, but my career was coming to it looked like it was coming to an end there. But, but um, you know, it was. Let's just say that there was some extremely tough adversity I had to overcome, and I ended the year, you know, by um, knocking a very, very tough opponent out in the first round. So, you know, it was. A, it's a little bit of like a reassurance, I guess, that I'm on the right path here. Let's talk about that fight. Um, that was the first fight, or sorry, the last fight of 2022 in your hometown. Beautiful, absolutely amazing knockout. I had the pleasure of catching that on uh, on film, and it was another one of our great things that I got to catch. Thank Talk you. Talk about that fight and uh, what you take away from that fight. That that was another one where uh, you know there was an opponent change. I I don't even tell. I don't know how many times there was an opponent change. There was just different guys yapping and this and that and like. Like I said, there was a lot of adversity. I was coming off with a controversial win, and you know, a lot of uh, a lot of pressure. And and there was, like I said, there was a lot going on behind the scenes. But on the night, I showed up, listened to my corner, made a couple mistakes in that, you know, that two minutes of fighting. But at the end of the day, got the job done. And the the opponent that ended up showing up was like a 230-pound heavyweight. And and never had been stopped to the head like that, I believe. So, you know, it was a it was a great statement to end the year strong, going into the new year. Who did he just fight before you? Before me, he fought Brandon Glanton. Oh yeah, I see. I seen you guys online going back at it a little bit. Do you have anything you want to say to him? I don't like him. No, I don't like him either. <laughs> I don't like him. I want to hurt him. What do you think of the way he fights? I don't really watch him. I just don't like him. I just he he, he said some things that to me. Um, you don't you don't take it back, even if it was for publicity, because I can 
I looked at my DMs actually today because I tagged him in a, in a story on Instagram. <clears throat> and I actually noticed that he had sent me a few messages that I didn't see. And he was rooting for me in one of my fights. He's like, I'm actually rooting for you and this and that. And almost like talking as if we're buddies. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, do you forget what you said last year? That's not how it works. And, you know, today I actually had, I was talking to Lawrence O'Coley, uh, one of the world champions at Cruiserweight, wants to get some sparring on the go. And uh, so we had a brief conversation and he's actually bringing Brandon to his training camp. And I told him, well, I've got no problem coming for sparring, but just know that I'm punching that guy in the teeth as soon as I see him. Yeah, that, that would be an interesting one. Is, uh, is that a fight you want to see in the future, possibly? Hopefully. But I don't think you would take it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this fight coming up. Um, what separates you and Arthur Glor Glorov? Um, I think same thing that separates me and every other um, cruiserweight, heavyweight, just like my mindset. There, there's, I don't think that there's another person who's going to get in the ring with me who's willing to go as far as I am. I'll literally die. Well, we don't want that. I certainly don't. And, uh... No, I know, I know, but I will. Like, it's, to me, you're going to die anyway, so I want to do it doing what I love, and, you know, that's it. I don't doubt your toughness not for a second, brother. But, yeah. Um, I see a long future ahead. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any predictions on this fight? Um, I don't know. I kind of, I feel like it's going to be like, just, it's all about just controlling my emotions. Like I know for a fact that if I can listen to St what Stevie's saying and I can, and I can control no matter what's going on outside the ring, if I can get in that ring, be composed, be calm, I'll get the job done and I'll get it done early. If I go in the ring and something ticks me off on the way to the ring, if I slip and stub my toe or something and something in the, the bruiser inside me, whatever you want to call it, alter ego, decides to start, you know, rattling on the cage, then there's going to be problems. Then there's going to be cuts. Then there's going to be a slugfest that I don't have to be in with a bigger guy. That's, you know, then, that, then you're talking, then I could get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Then I could be in trouble because the guy's big, he punches hard and, you know, but like I said, if, if I come in there and, and I can keep everything together like a professional does, control my emotions, go in the ring cold, calculate it, you know, still willing to die, still willing to kill, but do it with a composed mind, listen to what Stevie's telling me, it's going to be a short night. I like that. Um, this has got to be the biggest opportunity of his life as well. Um, being, you know, he's in the top 100 and you're in the top 20. So definitely his biggest opportunity here coming uh, coming to Canada. Um, do you think he has any anything else you want to uh, to say to the fans out there? I mean, they know what they're gonna see. Um, I don't think I need to really hype myself up, and, you know. But I do appreciate the fans, like. Although I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little, might be, some might say I'm a little out there by the way I fight and my mindset when I go into the ring, I do actually feel the energy of the crowd when, and when I walk in. Sometimes I even stop and I'll take a moment just to look around and, you know, appreciate that these people are coming to watch, you know, there, because without the fans, you know, we wouldn't even have boxing. We'd be still out there street fighting in parking lots. So, you know, thank you to all the fans that have come out. Anything you want to say to the Hamilton crowd? Yeah, just in that, like, again, like, I mean, I appreciate it. And I'm starting to feel at home at Hamilton, to be honest with you. Like, like really, it does feel like home. When I drive here now to start my camps, it's, I don't feel like a stranger. I don't feel like, like, when I go out in public, I don't feel like people are looking at me like, who's this, you know, who's this tattooed up guy with black eyes and looks like he wants to hurt everybody. <laughs> you know, people are actually coming up. You know, like I said, they come up and they recognize me and stuff, and it's really cool. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah.